Welcome to Voodoo Whiskey Gaming, and this is my late review of Bright Memory. I played it on Xbox Series X. It's also available on Steam. And really, this is just more of a filler thing so that I have more time with Cyberpunk 2077. But let's get into it, and we'll start with the story, which I have no fucking clue, honestly. You're breaking into some kind of base to do something with a computer and then like a wormhole or something opens up and you either travel back in time or to another world and nobody seems to give a shit. There's some generic bad dude who's trying to do who the hell knows what and he basically skips out on this relic that you decide to collect and what it has, it has no meaning, or if it does, it's never explained. The story is just, I, I don't even know if there is a story. But to go along with the poor writing there, I will say the dialogue is really poorly written. It's generic and shit. It's nothing that any human being has ever really said, or at least not in those combinations. Which will go into the audio, and I'm gonna say the voiceover work it goes along with that poor dialogue because it just, it's horrible. Maybe the dialogue wouldn't seem so bad if it was well delivered, but it's not well delivered. It's really, really poorly delivered. The sound effects are, they're fine, they're not amazing, they work well enough, they fit fairly well, but, I mean, that's true of the music as well. It's really generic rock music, and it's not particularly good, it's not particularly bad, you'll definitely forget it. Let's get into the gameplay mechanics and whatnot, and it is a first-person shooter, and it has some unique and kind of cool gameplay stuff going on. You have three guns, the shotgun is a complete piece of shit, the pistol and the assault rifle work very well, you have a light katana which also works well, it's a good weapon, you can grapple onto things, you can do an EMP pulse, which EMPs don't work that way, but you can incorporate those into your combat and that's actually a pretty cool thing and that's about all I could say is that's a pretty cool idea. Some of the ideas there are cool, but it's in a really boring generic first person shooter. But the combat really just boils down to strafe around in a circle, fire at them, use your light katana, fire at them some more while the light katana recharges, repeat. I mean, that's all I did, it, and it worked, it was fine. There's a few basic puzzles to solve, but that's about it when it comes to that. Let's get into the controls, which actually, surprisingly enough, the controls are pretty good in this game. I was actually impressed with them. There are a few good things in this game, and the controls are one of them. The only control issue I had, and I'll jump on that right away, is that you have to hold down the left trigger to aim down your sights. Not nah, weird. It glitched one time and just kept me aimed down my sights, despite the fact I had let go of the left trigger. All I had to do was tap it, and it suddenly undid itself, but it was weird and not helpful. As far as when you press buttons, do they do what you want? Yes, they do. Does the camera move in a nice and smooth way? Does your character move in a nice and smooth way? Yes, it is responsive. I think the controls overall do work well, which is surprising to me. But it's not a bad thing. Let's get into the visuals and man, uh, it's not horrible looking. I will say the facial animations are really, really terrible and the enemies are fairly generic, or at least the soldier enemies. There are some other enemies who are a little more unique, but not unique enough. And it doesn't actually look terrible, but it doesn't look amazing either. You can really see in the cutscenes, though, the facial animations are horrible. They're just horrible. I also had some issues with, like, there was one time where I had to slide down a hill, and then there was nothing down there, and then magically there's an enemy down there, which, that's just poor directing, which, I mean, this game really does suffer from. Because not long after finishing that fight, because I killed that thing, some more enemies popped up, I guess a dragon or something flew overhead, and my character started talking about it, but... The game didn't direct me to look at it, so I missed it. Speaking of which, there are times where your character says stuff and there's nothing on screen that goes along with it. At one point, my character talked about like wondering why all these dead soldiers were here or what happened to them, something along those lines. And there's nothing there. No corpses, no bodies, no nothing, just stares. So the game is just kind of a mixed bag, because there are actually some cool elements. I kind of like some of the like designs, I like the world overall, but a lot of the other stuff is very generic, and honestly, even the world itself isn't too unique, but it does look fairly good, it just, I mean, it could be so much better. 
But let's wrap this up. This game has one other issue that I can't stand, and it's in the UI, and that is the whole cursor thing for, you know, a controller-based game for console games. I don't like it to begin with. I don't like using the cursor in menus. I like being able to press up or down on the stick to navigate the menus. But this game is even worse about it because the cursor is tiny, so it just doesn't fit. It doesn't work as well on a console. And to just sum it up, there is good good controls and some cool mechanics at the core of this game, but everything surrounding it is bad. And I understand that this is an indie game, but it's definitely, man, eight bucks. It's eight bucks and that is too much. I say skip this. Like it's tragic. I hate doing that to indie titles, but man, for eight bucks, maybe if there was like five other chapters to this game, I would go for that. But there isn't. There's one chapter and it took me like 30 minutes to beat. So just the hole that is there is not enough. There needs to be so much more for this to be worth paying for ever. Okay, so in the comments down below, why don't you tell me what's a game that you felt should have been free? As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing in general, share and subscribe. Have a good one.